Good day everyone. Welcome to today's vlog. I'm not sure what we'll get up to today, but I'm kind of excited because I have a new camera and a new mic. So we'll see if, uh, I'm not sure if that will make the videos better, but it will make my life a bit easier. <laughs> All right, let's see what we can get up with today and uh, let's get started with today's vlog. Let's go. So I thought today I would just take you for a quick walk, or actually share a quick section of my walk. I shared this bit of the field here, lit with goldenrod, that just uh, has some paths mown through that I normally take down as another path to the sea. But sometimes I like to walk our little private road here, past the field of goldenrod. I love this scene of the purple Martin house and the goldenrod underneath. And beyond that bank of trees is the sea. And then as we walk here into the field, on the edge, you can see all the wildflowers. What's nice is the uh, neighbors let this bit of their lawn go to a native meadow, and then they just cut paths through with the intermittent oaks and scrub pines mixed in. It's a very New England coastal garden provided by nature. Look at the amazing lichen on these trees. Look how beautiful that is wet with morning dew, so the, col the contrast is much higher between the bark and I love that green. I'm always taking samples of odd things to the uh, paint store and having them scan it to get paint colors. Like see here, look at the color change between this more grayish green lichen and then this brilliant, almost electric colored chartreuse green. And of course, a little toadstool, just ripe to be set with little animals and dollhouse miniatures. But I love this little bit, I thought I'd share this tiny little bit of the walk because I love this bit here with the field and the old stone wall. And this bit is part of our neighbor's pathway to their dock. Now I've walked you to the dock before, but I usually walk our beach, but sometimes I walk this path, which is kind because again, this is, this bit here is the neighbors, but we are a friendly lot around here. So following the old stone wall, past their new little pump house and their old raised well, which we also have this type of well. Being so close to the sea, uh, when freshwater wells are found, you often have a raised above ground access to it. We hope to have a new pump house built around ours one day, but I just like this little pathway to the woods or to the dock because normally I walk the beach, but sometimes I take this way because it's nice as opposed to the open brash sand and crunch of the shells. Sometimes it's nice to cut through their little woodland here which they maintain quite well. And then down to the old brick path, which I hope you can see. This used to be a bit more ornate back in the 19th century. And the house that they currently live in used to be a bigger house. It was basically a big estate, but they, as many other families had to, <laughs> had to sell off parcels of land to hold on to some of it. So they had to rebuild in a, still a lovely house, but what remains of the old larger estate coming to the beach anyway, is this old brick path. But I just enjoy coming on my morning walk this way sometimes. In fact, sometimes I will go both ways. Oh, now look at this magical toadstool. Sometimes I actually keep a little miniature, a chair or a little one of my 
animals, my little animal ornaments, so that if I come upon something like this in nature, it's the perfect way to set up a natural fairy garden. But then as we come around here, you can see, and though Labor Day has ended, there's still a couple of beach chairs left there. Now the, the neighbors who own this, who own this dock as well, are very kind because they let a few of the other people who are further in the harbor, who don't have as much sort of a swimming beach access, to come here. So in the summer there may be three or four families walking here, riding their bikes, putting out their deck chairs. And right here, where they sometimes launch boats, is a nice little sandy bit for swimming. But you can see how normally I would walk along here from the house, along our beach. But by coming through the wood, along the brick path and the wooden gangway, it's just a nice different view. And look how lovely with the, the sun shining through. I'm hoping my sound is picking up the sound of my boots on the dock because I love that sound. I think there's a plane going in. Now I think there's a mode on here for panning, so let's see if I can do it. Oh well, this is my new camera. Another reason why today's vlog will most likely just be me sharing this walk with you is I recently took a trip to the city with hubby and found a new camera with a built-in boot. And I'm still learning to use it. I want you to see the little fish and minnows swimming, but I'm not sure if I know how to zoom in. I hope that that's showing up. We just missed a cormorant taking flight off of one of the fishermen's floating docks. And all those little black things in the water, those are all oyster cages where they seed and grow oysters. And you can see the gulls love to use it as a nighttime roost. And we kayak here quite often and kayaking through around those, um, you can actually kayak through them. Often the snowy egrets will stand on them and though they are tend to be more frightened of me when I walk down on the beach in the morning when I'm low in a kayak and I skim across the water basically lower than their eye level they don't seem frightened at all I just need to get a waterproof camera to capture that but here you can see I can't remember if the last time I took here the tide was quite low so this dock which here is a floating dock would have been very low to the ground, but now it's almost even with where we are on the solid dock right here. But of course as the tide goes down, that will slip down with the current. There's a cute little dory dinghy. And the houses are much quieter now as the season ends, but many families still come down weekends, often on a Thanksgiving holiday. You'll see houses with lights on, and then occasionally a few will brave winter. Those who aren't off on skiing holidays or, or warmer climbs, but of course we are always here. I wish I could figure out how to do my panoramic shot. It would be really lovely, but for now I'll just have to do it by hand. So here we are at the end of the dock. You can't see it, but looking back, the boathouse its peak is just jutting out amongst the trees and the old dinghy of ours which is no longer seaworthy is turned upside down there and as you pan around this way this little spit of sand which is amazing to swim on while our side is a bit more rocky this side is lovely and smooth and sandy just because it's based on how the, the water moves in and out of here so you can dive off the dock and swim across and then lounge on the sand. And that is called Treasure Island by those neighbors who have that house because this, is, this bit of land is technically on their property, but of course the neighbors all swim to it. 
I think it was their grandchildren who named it Treasure Island. Because as a child, venturing out there to find imaginary treasure, you could see why the name would happen. And yes, a still some boats are still out. But in a couple more months, this will begin to empty out and only the fishermen's boats, like these here, will remain in the water because they have to tend to their oyster cages throughout the season. But look how lovely it is to see the sun across the water rippling like that. just missed it. A bigger fish was just chasing this little school of minnows and they just shot above the waterline making those little magic ringlets. You could imagine fairies. Ah, there goes the big fish out there. Do you see him chasing? Oh, I hope you're getting it. I hope this is showing up. But see the larger fish are feeding on the smaller fish and try as they might to jump free of the sea. All they can do is hop out for a few brief moments and then plunge back in. Needless to say, it's uh, one can be quite lucrative with dinner if you fish off the dock. Even fishing off our shore, we have a friend who lives inland who always comes out to fish our beach. So, when I walk this way, I often just walk back the beach. So let's do that. So I hope you're enjoying today's quiet vlog of just walking. But I, as I increasingly try to make more videos, more short videos, I think more and more how I just would like it to be little vignettes of my life. And I live a pretty quiet, probably boring to some life. So, my little snippets of my day, such as this, is what it is. A quiet walk in the stillness of early morning. Oh, I sh wish, wish I could s learn to zoom in properly with this. You can see the fish feeding. So I'm lucky that my uh, m morning commute is just through the woodland or along the shore to the dock. And really I start, walk around and then head back to my workplace. <laughs> Gosh, I hope the sound of my new mic is picking up the splash of the fish feeding. I love this sound in the morning. When Algernon Zico is having his breakfast, you can hear the tap, tap, tapping of the mollusk or the crab shell as he drops it onto the feeding flat rock. But these fish, as you walk along this bit of the shore towards the uh, dock, that splash that they make as they come up and chase the shoals of minnows to have their breakfast. And looking back towards home, and the tide is middling, I'd say. The high tide line is there. Oh, but last night, oh, I meant to try to capture it. Last night, the moon was so magical. It was full. It's, I think it's going to be full tomorrow. And, um, 
my sister-in-law is coming for a Monday kayak because the t high tide will be lovely. So she tries to make it down when we have the severe tides because it's fun to kayak the high tide. And if it's severe enough, we get the mud flats. And then we can go mudlarking out in the harbor. So today, this is my walk. I've already been out. Geez, it's almost dark when I go out now because we still get up at the same time, but the sun doesn't. <laughs> so uh, I do the chickens and the quail, check my fruit cages, and then head out for my morning walk. And as I have different paths I can take, I just sort of decide on the spur of the moment. Walking the beach will depend on if the tide is high or low. If it's extra windy, I may do more woodland and field. Although I have to admit, even when it's windy, I can't help but come down. I think the few times I have not come down on the beach have always been during heavy snow. And we had that blizzard back in 15 that kept us off the beach because we had feet of snow, which I hadn't seen really in 20 years. And uh, we haven't seen since, so touch wood that will remain the same. I'm hoping this winter to be as the previous winters where we just get the magical dusting of snow. And of course, all of this grass you'll be watching turn brown and umbers and autumnal shades and the glow of it in the sun as it turns yellow and gold. And then it dies back. It's just flat and disappears. And then hopefully little drifts of white snow will fill in little clusters of the shore will freeze and make its amazing patterns as the tide takes the ice in and out and then it melts as it hits the deeper salt of the sea and back home we are on our own beach with the old railroad tracks jutting into the water which I've mentioned on other blogs, but if there's anyone new, these railroad tracks are here because though they're resting out now, they used to be the main source of taking the family's sailboats out of the sea at the end of the season, and they would get pulled up by an old motor, which still exists in the boathouse, from a 1950s, some sort of old car. But the tracks still exist, and we want to leave them because they're grandfathered in, so we hope to one day to restore them in some way, though we probably can't afford to have <laughs> two large sailboats. We hope someday to have something small. And uh, though we may not need to have the pulley system to bring the boat into the boathouse, it actually would be economical because having one's boat hauled in storage is actually quite pricey. <laughs> so being able to do it in one's own boathouse could be good. But you can see here how all the cross ties, sadly, have begun to fall away as the sea eats and eats away. The last time this had a boat on it was, I'd say, seven, eight years ago. Oh no, that's not true. Gosh, has it been 10 years since the boat was on here? I put this up here yesterday's walk. I was trying to see the light through this old conch shell. Hopefully you're seeing it. Isn't it magical? That's what I mean, there's so much inspiration in every square inch of this place that I'm often loath to uh, venture too far beyond it. And of course, I think I shared before, we have masses of these shells that wash up, which are wonderful to use in pots and around edges for mulch because it keeps weeds from growing over it. And then of course, we do have our own soft sand mixed in with the rock. And then all the seaweed and algae 
waiting to be picked through and possibly prints made from and the big rock I love to walk to so often and the spitting rock you can see the high tide line is maybe about two and a half feet above where we currently are and then here I just walk back up our path to the lower lawn and to the house so I hope you enjoyed this walk. As I said, I think this is all I can manage for today, Sunday's vlog, just because I was out camera shopping, so I didn't have as much time. Can you see the patterns there made by the water moving the grass? And even the little patterns here. where the tide is just gently sending waves in and out. Well, thank you for joining me here today. Hope you enjoyed today's vlog. And uh, I'm definitely enjoying this cooler weather. So until next time, remember, stay creative. Cheers.